Welcome, this is the revision video for fitness training methods and specifically aerobic endurance training methods. First one we're going to look at is continuous training. So I want you to write as much information down as you know about continuous training. While you do this, pause the video please. Right, so it's quite a basic training method. Perform a train at a steady pace and a moderate intensity for at least 30 minutes. Um, normally a little bit longer. Because the intensity is low, it's a useful method, method for people beginning, so with low fitness levels, and um, people who are recovering from injuries to get back up to fitness standards. Advantages, so no special equipment needed, it's really easy to carry out and organise. Um, its training can be made sport specific, and it's good for building an endurance base. Disadvantages is it can be very boring um, or monotonous because it's training for long distances and a long time. Um, high risk of injury from running on hard surfaces. So if you run on the roads, it's a lot higher risk of injury. And it only develops aerobic endurance, not anything to do with anaerobic fitness. Fart leg training, exactly the same thing. Write down as much as you can about it, and I'll move on to the next slide with all the information. So, it's um, the word fartlek, fartlek comes from the Swedish word meaning speed play. Um, it is a contra continuous training method with no rest. So you don't at any time actually stop and rest. The performer varies their intensity by running at different speeds. Um, so essentially it would be things like you would walk for a certain distance, then jog for a certain distance, then sprint for a certain distance. Intensity training may be increased by using equipment as well, such as running with a backpack on with weights inside to, to sort of make it harder. The advantages of the training method, again it can be made very sport specific, no need for specialist equipment. The performer can control, control the intensity level, so if they're a little bit fitter, they can put longer, hard phases in there. And it adds variety and interest to your training, so it's not so monotonous. Um, you need to be in careful in controlling the training intensity, not making it too hard or not making it too easy. And the performer needs to be really self-disciplined and motivated to ensure that they are sticking to their training program properly and they're not just making it easy on themselves and dropping out of their sprints too early. Right, the last one, um, interval training. Now it's important to note that this comes up for both um, aerobic endurance and speed training methods. I'm going to cover both in this video, so make sure you're aware that it covers both. So the performer only performs at two intensities, which is work and rest. Um, by varying the length and the intensity of the actual working part of it, training can be improved both anaerobic and aerobic endurance, which makes it very flexible. Um, work typically varies from about 30 seconds to 5 minutes. And what we talked about, the rest period with the work, that can be um, jogging, walking or complete rest, just standing still and resting. The advantages, as you can see, far outweigh the disadvantages. It allows clear progressive old load to build into your training. This is through increasing the work periods and decreasing the rest. It can be tailored to be sport specific, like the other training methods can. There's no specialist equipment needed. It can be used for aerobic and aerobic, tra anaerobic training. Um, distance, time and intensity can meet individual training needs. So, loads of advantages there. Disadvantages are the performer can lose interest due to repetition because it's very much same again, same again, same again. And you need to be careful when you're planning it, again, not to make it too hard um, and burn yourself out, make it too hard for yourself. You'll then lose motivation and so on. Right, it's really important that you do learn all the disadvantages and advantages of each of those training methods. Um, and also... You should apply each of the training methods to the training principles, which means the basic principles, the fit principles, but also the additional ones. Some we've just talked about, like progressive overload and um, individual differences and needs. Once you've done that, move on to some of the other videos and start to master them. Good luck.